Well, welcome aboard Constance once again. Constance is a very conventional cruising boat. She's a Mason 44, fairly narrow beam by modern standards. She's a traditional boat, long keel, and she's got a modern cutter rig. Now, when people come alongside and look at the boat, they notice that we've got in-boom reefing. And they're always curious about that because people have got this sneaking feeling that in-boom reefing might make a lot of sense, but they're not sure, and being sailors, they're naturally suspicious. So I thought I'd make a little video to show you why I am completely content with my in-boom reefing. I inherited it. I didn't order it and think, oh, that'll be a good thing. I'll spend my money on that. When I bought the boat, she had it, and I wasn't sure about it. As I've said before, if you inherit something and you're not sure, suck it and see. Don't just throw it in the skip. See if it works. Well, Ros and I checked it for a year and it was absolutely magnificent. It's made our life lovely. We can operate the whole main from the cockpit. And that's all I'm going to say about it right now. I'm going to be in an anchorage later on and I'm going to talk about it there when I can actually get in amongst it with the camera not bouncing about, get down to the nitty gritty and show you how it works. So, here we go. I sailed on a couple of in-boom furling boats years and years ago and I didn't rate them at all. They, they, they had a big problem. They had fixed kicking straps, fixed vangs uh, to make sure the boom angle was right against the mast and that just killed the sail. It made it absolutely hopeless and the more you reefed it the more the leech of the sail hung out and it was, just didn't work. So when I bought this boat and she had an in-boom furling system I really expected I would be putting it in the bin and rigging lag briefing, which I've got a great deal of time for as the logical route really. Anyway, I had this, I was, uh, well it was there and it was a lot of money, so I thought I'd give it a go. And do you know, after a season with it, I was completely sold. Uh, my wife and I sail this boat on our own, she's a 45 foot boat, we're, we're, um, we're not in our first bloom of youth, we're sort of, sort of retirement cruiser really for us, and it's great if you don't have to go on deck to do your mainsail at all. It's absolutely brilliant. So we both love it. And I've discovered that it does everything I want it to do. There is one drawback, which I'll come to at the very end, but it's a, it's a brilliant system. And here's how it works. The sail rolls onto a mandrel. That's quite a substantial thing, that sort of size, uh, aluminium, inside the boom. It's got a simple bearing at the back end. And at the forehead end here, there is a Essentially, it's a stainless steel hardy spicer joint, a bit like you have in the uh, propeller shaft of an old-fashioned car, or a, or a, yeah, it's pretty bulletproof, really. And they are massive chunks of stainless steel, so the chances of that failing are very slim. If it does fail for some reason, all you've got to do is let go of the main halyard, and the sail will come down. No problem. Compare that with an in-mast system where there's all sorts of potential for things happening that you don't want to happen. And in the end, if it all fails and it's halfway up the mast, you're we're in dire trouble, aren't you? Another thing, uh, you've got all the way to that stowed stale up the mast. And when they're working out the, uh, the numbers for the stability of the boat, I'll bet you they don't put that into the formula. Here, the stowed sail is down where it counts, so if you hope to in a storm in the North Atlantic, uh, you wait where you want it. So, there's a huge amount going for it. The way it works, basically, it pulls up on its halyard, and as it does, it unrolls. There is also a downhaul attached to this system, and the downhaul rolls up on a drum here. So as the sail goes up, the downhaul gets rolled in. And that maintains a bit of tension on the luff here, which you need to make sure it feeds in nicely. And also, you need it to make sure you've got a nice tight roll. Otherwise, it becomes chaotic. And when you want to reef the sail, we'll do that in a minute. We'll hoist it and we'll reef it. And you'll see that we just pull it down a bit with the downhaul, ease the halyard, then set up the tensions again, and, and, and that's it. You're home free. It is the most wonderful system. In order to operate it, it's nice if the sail is spilling wind. Now this is ideally, if you head to wind, that's great, and I'm going to do it on the anchor in a minute to show you how nice it can be. Uh, if you're at sea, you don't want to be head to wind at all. Very, very rarely do you want that. Um, but what I've found is that uh, anything like this, or a slab reefing sail for that matter, will reef more easily if it's feathering and spilling wind. You can do that on a close reach. 
And if you're on a close reach, you've got complete control over the boat. You can be steering on your headsail. You know what's happening. You're not going to end up in this ridiculous situation that you had to win, losing way, and you don't know what tack you're going to fall off on. So if we're sailing along and we want to put a reef in, if we're close hauled, we just let off the sheet and uh, put the reef in. Uh, if we're on a broad reach, we get everything ready to go, and then we flick around onto a close reach real quick, bang down the reef, and then bear away again. And I'll talk a, a little bit more about that later. So that is essentially what we do. Clever bit is the vang and the topping lift. The boom on these systems does have to be at a fairly carefully calculated angle to the mast in order to get a nice, nice roll here, otherwise it'll come forward or, or wander off aft. The old fixed kickers patronised owners because it said, well, you know, we'll make sure you can't do this wrong. Well, that's rubbish. You can't sail a boat with a fixed kicker or vang. It's hopeless. You get no control over your leech tension. So what we do here, I've got a lovely spring vang, proper big vang, and um, I mark my topping lift, don't I? I've got a piece of tape around the topping lift when it's at the right angle. And that comes back to the cockpit. So does everything else. I just take up the slack on the vang and the boom's correct and it's ready to go. It's that easy. There's only one downside. I don't think I'd want to try and pull a reef into this with the boom actually out on a preventer on a dead run. I don't think that would work very well. It would be asking too much of this joint here. So if you're going down the trade winds, maybe it's not the answer. It might be if you don't mind rounding up to put a reef in, but um, for me, I like to be able to reef when I'm going downwind. And with the slab reefing system, if you've got a good crew and the boat's not too big, you can do that. So um, that's the only downside. And for me right now, I'm not going down the trade winds. It's no problem at all, but people do. And they've sailed around the world with these systems, this one specifically, and are very happy with it. So maybe I haven't got that right. Who knows? Anyway, that's how it works. Let's go and see it happen now. Well, this is a sort of control centre. This is where all the action happens. And uh, there are various things to attend to here before we do anything to the mainsail. Um, it's a very simple process. Uh, I've got the topping lift marked here, as you can see. Uh, and so long as that's about, about six inches beyond the jammer, that's going to be fine. So I've already set that and that's all right. The vang uh, is less important than the topping lift at the moment, but I'm going to take the slack up on the vang so that uh, the boom is held reasonably, uh, reasonably solidly up and down. Um, because that gives me the angle that I need to make sure that the sail will roll and unroll sweetly. We're going to be hoisting the sail, so there's the halyard coming out of its jammer. The jammer's already on, so that's good. Uh, the downhaul's going to hold it down, so we don't want that, so we're going to, we're going to let the downhaul off. That's it. We're ready to rock and roll. Next job is to load up the halyard onto the winch. Now we're loading up the mighty Anderson electric winch, ready to go, and he's all ready, we're ready to hoist. So we're ready to hoist now, we've got the winch loaded up, here's my little button for my electric winch, and I've led the downhaul away to the other side of the cockpit and it goes halfway around a winch barrel. That enables me to keep some tension on the downhaul while I'm, while I'm hoisting. It's important to do that because if you don't, the sail will, it, it, won't, go into the, it won't go into the feeder very well and the nice tight roll that we've got falls to bits. And generally speaking, it's just a scruffy job. So you've got to keep some tension on that downhaul all the time. Not too much, because if you do, it's amazing how you feel even this powerful winch slowing down more than you want. But uh, you just judge it so that you've got it exactly right. Soon comes to you once you've done it a few times. Right, off we go. Okay, so now we jam off the downhaul. That's got that one done. Uh, the main halyard is already jammed, 
So that's safe, we can take that off the winch. And what we now have to do is put a little bit of extra tension on the downhaul, just to put some tension on the luff. Here we go. I've got to watch the sail while I do this. That's it. That's spot on. Lovely, beautiful sail. Just right. Okay, next we're going to put a reef in it. This is something that usually happens at sea. And uh, it's nice to have the sail kicking when you put a reef in, so there's no wind in it. Uh, the way to do this, normally, if you're close haul, it's dead easy. You just let the sheet off and pull down the reef. If you're on a broad reach, what we generally do, Ros and I work on this together, and uh, we get everything set up in the way that I'm going to show you in a minute. And then when we're absolutely ready and we're ready to go, I take the halyard over here because I'm going to have to keep some tension on that, uh, round my little winch here to keep my tension on. And then I steer very quickly up onto a close reach. No further up than that, because if you go head to wind, you like lose control. Just up onto a close reach. The sheet's already out because we're on a broad reach and the sail will flog. As soon as the sail starts to flog, Roz hauls away on the downhaul with the winch. I ease away on the halyard and, uh, and the job's done. All we have to do then is swap them over, put the halyard back on the winch to get some tension and, 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 and that's it. Right, well I'm going to put a reef in now because I think it's going to be quite windy out there. It doesn't feel very windy in here but I can see a bit of white water out on the harbour. Out on the harbour. So, um, so here we go. First job, let the, let the jammer off the halyard. There it goes. So I've now got the tension on here. I've got my downhaul already loaded up and my sheet and my kicker and my Vang are at the right angles already because they were set when I hoisted the sail. If I was going to put a reef in I'd have to check that before I did it. But here we go. So now I hoist, pull down my reef, keeping tension on the halyard. I'll pull it down to that first batten I think. Well I'm going to put a second reef in just to make the point. Let the tension off the halyard. Everything's right, and down we come. Nice deep reefs these are I'm putting in. No point pansying about, is there? If you want a reef, you want a reef. So we're going to pull it down until that batten's on the boom. And that's as far as it's going to come. I'm just going to put the jammer on the halyard. I've already got the downhaul on, so I've put a bit of tension on the downhaul. And that's it. Blow as hard as you like now, Mr. Wynn. We're ready for you. And if you blow any harder, we'll pull the next one down. 